Welcome to Stories with Soul. I am your host, Jamie Ice, musician turned entrepreneur and co-founder of 6th Ave Homes and 6th Ave Storytelling. Over the past 10 years, I have launched multiple successful businesses and have become obsessed with all things entrepreneurship and marketing. I've been on a personal quest to unpack what it takes to make and grow a great brand. One thing that I've discovered is that stories are powerful and that storytelling has the power to set a brand apart. Join me as I dive into the stories of the heavy hitting leaders, entrepreneurs, artists, and business owners in our community to hear their biggest wins, greatest losses, and their best business secrets. There's a story behind every great brand. Welcome to Stories with Soul. Stories with Soul is brought to you by my company, Sixth Ave Storytelling. In 2020, we launched a marketing company on a mission to encourage entrepreneurship and make starting and growing a small business easier than ever before. Since then, we have helped hundreds of small businesses and entrepreneurs grow their brands by giving them the tools, resources, strategy, and support they need to craft and share their stories. If you are thinking about launching and growing your own brand, schedule a meetup with me today. I would love to talk to you. Head over to sixthavstorytelling.com and let me show you how the storytelling approach can transform your marketing strategy. This episode is sponsored in part by Pre-Kindle, the platform designed to empower event creators to develop the best experiences possible for their communities. Did you know that Pre-Kindle was actually founded in DFW and is still headquarters in Dallas? Well, now you do. We love local businesses and Pre-Kindle is one of the best. With a best in class platform of features, no long-term contracts, low service fees, responsive mobile friendly event pages and friendly and attentive support, Pre-Kindle is my personal favorite ticketing and marketing platform for any event. Anytime I'm planning something with my band, Green River Ordinance, Pre-Kindle is our go-to platform to use. With an impressive roster of event creators, menus and entertainment destinations across the nation, Pre-Kindle's hands down the best. In DFW alone, they've partnered with incredible spaces like the Granada Theater, Panther Island Pavilion, the Kessler, Will Rogers Coliseum, the Fort Worth Modern, Tulips, Rizzi Theater, and more. If you have been to an event or venue in DFW, I promise you have likely been using Pre-Kindle and you didn't even know it. Beyond ticketing, Pre-Kindle also helps automatically promote your event. With over 500,000 subscribers in North Texas, in partnerships with event discovery sites like Bands in Town, Spotify, Google, they're set up to also help you spread the word. So go to prekindle.com, that's P-R-E-K-I-N-D-L-E.com and click Get Started to begin using the platform. They are on a mission to bring your event to life. Welcome to Stories with Soul. I am your host, Jamie Ice. I am excited for you guys to hear this conversation that we're about to have. I am joined by Joe T. Lankart and Lanny Lankart, two of the, the founding family members of the Lankart family that own historic Joe T. Garcia's. There are six siblings that currently run and operate the business, and y'all are the, the, the two oldest brothers of, of, of the six, but they are, their family has, has been a part of this institution for over a hundred years. 100 years, which we're going to dive into the almost 100 years. Almost. Right? Not, not 100 quite years to 100 yet. years. Okay, but but, so I always kick off every episode just reading a little bit of, of sort of the accolades. And I kind of like doing it while the person is sitting there. Um, so I, I, I pulled a couple of things just from a recent bio I found that I just love the way it was written. And then I'm going to go into some just some of the, the history. Uh, but I just love, I love what this said. Out of all of Fort Worth's food destinations, only one has stood the test of time. Joe T. Garcia's Fort Worth's most iconic dining experience, which is just so true. With no menu, no credit cards, and only two dishes to choose from, Joe T's is an anom- anomaly. According to all the rules of restaurant success, we should be closed. If you've never been there, you, you won't understand why we have danced to our own beat for generations and will continue to do so. How our audacious family restaurant has lasted almost a century. You might not understand, but we do. We're going we're gonna to unpack that a little bit. It was founded in 1935 by Mama Sue's and Joe T. Garcia's. Uh, Joe T. Garcia, Mama Sue's migrated from, from Michoacan, Mexico to Fort Worth in 1911. And that's your, your great, your, your grandmother. Our grand, right? Your grandmother, correct. Right, right. Uh, it is currently owned and operated by the grandchildren, Lanny, Zarella, Joe, Jesse, Philip, and Elizabeth, which I'm joined by two of them here. Uh, and just a, a few awards and accolades. You have literally, <laughs> I saw a list of all the awards. You have won every possible award you could ever think of in food in Fort Worth. 
best margarita, best atmosphere, best patio, best dining, best Mexican restaurant, best family owned institution by Fort Worth Magazine. You were named Z- Z- a Zagat favorite restaurant. You're in the Texas Restaurant Association's Hall of Fame. Uh, you've won pretty much every Fort Worth Weekly Award you could ever possibly imagine. Uh, you're a James Beard uh, finalist restaurant. Like, like that, that's a, a huge, huge honor. They've won the Community Hero Award. Uh, they uh, Gourmet Magazine was named the favorite restaurant. Um, Family Business of the Year Award from Baylor, Fort Worth Star Telegram. You've also won pretty much every award you could possibly win there. And, and just recently, Reader's Digest said of, of all restaurants in the state of Texas, Joe T's is, is, is the best sort of traditional restaurant that represents Texas cuisine, which is, which is pretty wild. Celebrities such as George Strait, Dan Rathers, Michael Jackson, Tina Turner, Garth Brooks, Tony <laughs> Bennett, Wayne Newton, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, Sybil Shepard, Charlton Heston, Paul McCartney, The Eagles, Tiger Woods. The list goes on and on. I, I have you more like presidents, governors, you have hosted them all. You, I mean, it's, it is an, an institution is an, is an understatement. So I am excited to have you guys here. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Glad to so, be here. So I, I want to, I want, where I want to start out is to me and, and probably like so many people, I, I kind of think of Joe T's as my restaurant. I went there as a kid, I had my 21st birthday there. Uh, I, I jumped in the pool when I was 16 and Joe, I think you kicked me out. Oh. Um, <laughs> Lanny I, sent me, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I sent it back down. Joe, take care of that. Yeah, I, I like, I ha, I've had my, my recently had my grandmother's 90th birthday there. We've had Father's Day. It's the first restaurant I ever took both of my kids to when they were children. It's their favorite restaurant. Uh, it, I've had probably 10 company Christmas parties there. We have a party there every year. Awesome. I mean, it, it is, it's, it's a huge part of, of just my family's history, but it's not my restaurant. It's really like, it is y'all's restaurant. Like you, it's been in your family for almost a century. So I, I, I would love to talk about just, just what was it like growing up there? And, 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 and you know, your family in this is sort of almost, you can't separate the two. So can you, like you guys grew up in the restaurant, like right, your, your mom, your parents were work, working there and then your grandparents. Well, I'll let Lanny start that. He's, he's the older one, so. Well, it was just like sort of someone's house, which was, it was our house. And, uh, you know, we'd wake up every morning and uh, we'd Mama Seuss would cook us breakfast, so we'd have breakfast in there. And uh, everything started there in, in the kitchen. I mean, from time one, I mean, uh, we'd walk in there and she'd be preparing stuff for the afternoon or, uh, you know, getting ready for the, uh, for the lunch run. And uh, it was always... Constant moving to her was in there. My father, mother, uh, grandfather, and uh, it was just uh, it was a very simple life. You know, it was you know uh, they all would all have our coffee or they would have their coffee. In fact, I think I drank coffee at a pretty early age in those really? days. Yeah, and uh, it was um, you know it was a very caring, but but you could but it, there was always this thing about. He always knew there was a purpose. What, what, what exactly were we doing in the kitchen here? Because at the time, I didn't know what they were doing in the kitchen, you know. But they were actually preparing all the food and getting all the the, the, the tables ready, which at that time wasn't that many. But how, um, how many restaurant or tables were there in the beginning? At the time, there was there was just uh, six out front, only and, uh, six tables, only six. And then, uh, but uh, in the back room, which was uh, the back dining room, then it was an it was an old house, and that was converted into four long tables, which they used. For parties sometimes, and um, that uh, that was a, um, I guess it, it didn't open up. The only way you get back there was through the kitchen, you know. So it wasn't always there. But then uh, towards the end, uh, nineteen sixty nine or seventy, we added the door so that we could actually get back to the back dining room. And so was was y'all like? Did you literally like live in the same house where the we restaurant lived behind was? there? You lived behind it. Yeah, okay. yeah the, the restaurant was up in the front, and then we lived back behind it, kind of. Oh, well, there was a house right behind it. Mm-hmm. We, we, there that was only the way I called it was the pink house because mm-hmm. they had the pink, pink trim. <laughs> the pink house, yeah. You know, we called it the pink house. So. so this is like it's like a compound. I mean, it's like pretty much. I guess you could say that your grandparents are there. Your y'all, your your, your, I mean, your parents are working exactly. There. I mean, well, I've always told friends that I knew no different. That was normal. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what normal was. Normal to us was to me. May I say? was growing up there, you know, living behind the restaurant, you know, like Lanny says, you know, watching our 
parents and, you know, grandmother. Uh, I did not get to know my grandfather. I was, mm-hmm. uh, came years behind. And, uh, but uh, watching them get things ready for the evening and, you know, for, for, the, for dinner. This episode is brought to you by my good friends at Visit Fort Worth. Visit Fort Worth is the official destination marketing organization of the 13 largest city, and I would say the greatest city in the United States, dedicated to promoting Fort Worth as a premier business and leisure destination with thriving centers of creativity, culture, and commerce. Visit Fort Worth is the parent organization of the Fort Worth Herd, the Fort Worth Film Commission, Fort Worth Sports Commission, Visita Fort Worth, and Music Initiative Here Fort Worth. They are doing a lot of amazing things. For more information on Visit Fort Worth, head over to visitfortworth.com and follow them on social at Visit Fort Worth. This episode of Stories with Soul is sponsored in part by Project 202, the leader in experience-driven software strategy, design, and development. Whether you're looking to build a new software solution, redesign your mobile app, or kick off a digital transformation initiative, Project 202's customized approach creates solutions that work for your customers. Customer experience drives engagement, and cultivating that experience requires a ton of attention and time. Project 202 is local and has 18 years of design leadership. This team is an expert in using customer-centric methods to build compelling data-driven customer experiences. Wherever you're at in your business journey, the diverse team at Project 202 will guide you from idea to execution. Go to project202.com, that's P-R-O-J-E-K-T 202.com and click contact to begin winning the hearts of your customers and exceeding your business goals today. And, and you, I, I remember hearing a story about you, like you, you, we talked a while ago and you were talking about falling asleep in like, the, uh, like the table linens. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, well, well, I fall asleep there. I mean, uh, we had, uh, we always use tabletops, five tabletops. Uh-huh. And, uh, there was a little corner over there between the, uh, both dining rooms. And my grandfather would, after he picked up a table, he would throw the tabletop into this little corner. And of course, uh, at, at that time, it wasn't, uh, you know, at the end of the night, it was maybe seven or eight you know, tabletops back there. Mm-hmm. But I would go back there and just sit, lay, lay back there and just take my nap until the place was closed up. And, uh, and like I was telling you, I think there's where I, you know, just smell that clean starch and everything. And, uh-huh. and uh, just, uh, I just, I couldn't go to sleep without that. I said, okay, go to bed over there. And then uh, if he went, when he woke me up, he'd always get that uh, little napkin or something, just kind of throw it at me and kind of wake me up. <laughs> Time to go, you know. And th- was this your dad? Or was That's this my your, granddad. Your, gran- your no, granddad. I remember that from the, yeah, back Who's in the day. Joe T. Joe T, huh? The original Joe, mm-hmm. original yeah. Joe T. And that's the part of the biggest memory I have of him was always, you know, picking me up off the tabletops and taking me to bed at, at nighttime. I was only three. That I, He passed away when I was three. Okay. So, I, you know, that's how I knew him. I remember when he was in my twos and three-year-olds, you know. And can you talk a little bit about, like, he, he, about him? He, like, I, I, Fort Worth Magazine, I think it was Fort Worth Magazine, just came out with, like, the most influential people of Fort Worth. Right. And he was, he's on that list, which is, right. which is pretty neat. Yeah, like, I, didn't get, I just saw that the other day, and I, I didn't have him read it yet. Um, he was a very charismatic man. I mean, he, uh, he walked the floor, you know, with his white apron on, as always his white shirt, and uh, okay. starts to the gill. And, uh, I, and uh, he just, there was just a presence about him, you know, no matter where he walked. And my grandmother was, was the, work, the workaholic thing. But my granddad was kind of the charisma part that brought everybody out there. He was the host. He was the host. He was the host. Yeah, everybody knew him, you know. And uh, and I and I like you. You, I, I've heard you're sort of like the inc- one. You have you share the same name, but but two, everyone says like you're sort of the incarnation of the original Joe T. Because you're always out front. You're greeting everybody. You're smiling. You're shaking hands. Right. Right. Well, you know, um, I enjoy meeting the people and visiting with everyone and. Uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little tough when we're busy and all and that, but, you know, people, I love, love, you know, we're very grateful uh, without a question of everybody that walks in our door and, you know, and people are always wanting to say hi. And I want to be sure I try to make sure I say hi to as many people as I can. And Which is and, part and, of the experience. And, oh, well, you know, we're, we're, I always tell them we're nothing without them coming in our door. Yeah. So. True. Yeah. That, that, that's definitely true. A, a huge part of the appeal is like, is this family and you guys, like people love seeing y'all there it, 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 it adds to not that it's it's not a g- gimmick it's like it's real but people love the face this is a family thing mm-hmm. um so 
and, and Mama Sue's was 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 your your grandmother. Correct. And so he so Joe Joe T passed away when you said you were you were three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of people knows, but she she ran it after that. It was, she, yeah, it was all it was all laid on her apron. Let me tell you what it uh, it was a. Uh, According to my, my my mother and my aunts, they all talked about it. Uh, it was a pretty trying time then because everything fell on her lap. And uh, at that time, she uh, well, she was a woman. And mm-hmm. all these bank notes that my granddad had taken out and all the people that he talked, I mean, she was now responsible for all this. And uh, she spoke very little English. And, uh, you know. Wow, even then? Even then, even then uh-huh. Really? Yes. And uh, she could get her point done, <laughs> down okay. real quick. So for her to take that over in the, in the early 50s and everything else, and, uh, and that's when I think my, my, my mother and uh, our, our mother and uh, dad you know, came in and uh, stepped it up with her and, uh, and turned it into what it is now. I mean, they actually expanded it, expanded I guess. Expanded it, yeah. And they expanded back. Well, we didn't expand until, se- well, 70, really, mm-hmm. is when we expanded. But, but then uh, you do the uh, up. The upper oh, dining room in 69. Yeah. Remember, we did the upper down, 69, dining room in 69. Yeah. 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 Quite that's when you put that little temporary bar up there. Right. I remember when you were, because you were, they were, because Lanny, Lanny had a vision with my brother David to, doing the patio. So they had to get their bar uh, certificate to learn to be bartenders. So cause they were the bartenders because y'all <laughs> were. You, you didn't serve you, alcohol before that? Uh, not, no, no, just beer. Just beer. Okay. Remember, it was it. still uh, pick up your own beer until not, uh, pick, up your, pick up your own beer. Pick up your own beer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Like you had just a ice chest or something, or the beer, the, the beer box that's out front. Yeah, mm-hmm. you just walk out there and just pick it up. That, that, that was it. And yeah. it was like the honor system. Tell it us was the honor system till <laughs> till it wasn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. People. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. You go, yeah. You go to the bathroom at nighttime. You see fifty bottles in there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. People would have under their tables. And everything. You know, uh-huh. Dad yeah. would always say, "Hey, go count the bottles under the tables." And, <laughs> and then go count make, the ones in the back room. Yeah, in the back. <laughs> so, so y'all were like, how old were you when? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you like you 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 were, had chores and things, and part of your chores were. Well, our chores was working in the restaurant, though. Like, what were you doing? Like, what? Were, oh my! Well, I mean, Lanny has like, his, I have mine. But t- I tell mean, me some of those memories. Uh, I think well, it's, I, I think everybody started with just uh, cleaning the beans. To be honest with you, yeah. I think uh, that, that was the easy. When you're yeah. a little bitty, yeah, just sort of how do you the clean? How do you there? clean beans? Tell me. Well, back then it was, then we, yeah, we just put the sack on the the table, and, and that was a big sack. Went to hundred oh. pounds back then. It oh. Didn't have to fifty pound, and you set them on the table, and you just pull them out, and you pulled the rocks out because you had to clean them. Uh-huh. And uh, so we just separate the rock, you know, get the rocks out of there, and just make sure no rocks got in the in the in the pot. Uh-huh. And, and uh, so then, them. and then we had to rinse them and wash mm-hmm. them, and then put them on the stove and boil them. So are you like elementary age at this point? Oh, yeah. I would definitely. Oh, yeah. No question. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we graduated probably to grade and cheese. <laughs> grade yeah. and cheese. Yeah, grade and cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Grade and cheese. Remember that. So yeah. you started in the kitchen. Oh, no, no question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And these are these are Mama Sue's rep- recipes. Like she's. Oh, correct. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so Joe was kind of like the, the face and he. He was the face it. and he also had the barbecue. It was, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, talk about that. So you used to serve barbecue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was called because uh, it wasn't Joe's, uh, Joe T. Garcia's Mexican dishes. It was Joe's place. And he served the barbecue and my grandmother served the enchil- uh, enchiladas. So that uh, fact, uh, I think it was 50 cents a pound, I think, or 35 cents a pound back in the days. when For I barbecue? Saw mm-hmm, barbecue. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Was it good? Do you remember it? The barbecue? No, I didn't. I don't think I ever ate, ate the barbecue coming come that way. Yeah. So the enchiladas won out. Yeah, won, yeah. by far. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was every day. <laughs> yeah, that Mama Sue's kept it up for a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, and, God, uh, yes. oh. for for a couple of years, and then finally just stayed with just the uh, the enchilada dinner, and that was it, correct? And is that enchilada, was all. Is the enchilada dinner the same? Pretty same much. thing. Like, the enchiladas same. are the same. And you, ha- exactly. you haven't. Same. You we haven't. don't know another way. We don't know. That. We don't have. She didn't leave us for one recipe. <laughs> well, and you still use the yeah, same. Uh-huh. Recipe. Same today. Yes. And okay, so someone like I, I heard that the recipe is also secret. Like, yeah, me and Joe and maybe just a couple of our uh, close guys are the only ones that actually even touch that. Yeah, the huh? only ones that know it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and there's, uh, is, is it true that there's like a secret, like a door with lock and key that has like... That would keep all our spices in there. <laughs> no, <laughs> it does keep, it does keep the spices in there, yeah. All, we do keep all the spices in there, huh? Uh, yeah. And no, no one else knows the recipe. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. no. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. No. That's such a wild thing to me. Oh, there's a lot of wild things. If you, I mean, you know, uh, it just uh, again, like you were saying earlier, it just um, 
we had a different lifestyle growing up. We grew up in the restaurant business, working in the kitchen and just, you know, when you say, what were your chores? That was that, you know, we didn't, mm -hmm. we didn't mow a lawn and we didn't, you know, do anything else. You know, we, we did that. And did you interact with, with customers very oh, much? Yeah. I remember that very well. Yeah. Uh, Joe was really uh, started at a young age. He liked to interact. And, and David, my, our brother was mm -hmm. a big interactor. I mean, David was, a, he had a very charismatic also mm -hmm. personality and loved to talk to the customers, you know? And, uh, so, uh, yeah, they all, I, th I was kind of in the back there. I said, no, I'm going to stay back here with my grandmother. You were, you were, you like, yeah, I'd be back with my grandmother. Yeah. You okay. yeah. back and then you ran the register. Yeah. I think we all ran the register. Every yeah, we did. Yeah. That's a, that, did. You know? that's what a way yeah. to learn math. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys get in trouble at all? Like I look at, I look at like, I have a four year old and a, and a six year old. Sweet as can be, but they're also just always moving and running around and wrestling and do, like. I didn't, they did. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, yeah. They were pretty. Uh, I don't know. They were pretty. They were pretty calm. We were, we were pretty. Uh, pretty nice. Yeah, we did. We. I they didn't mean, get too much trouble. I, I've always felt like mom kept us busy working all the time. We kind of like to say she goes can't get in trouble if you're always working. <laughs> that, that's is that's also why she maybe had so many kids. And I you think know so. what? And we <laughs> got along so. Well. I mean, when we grew up, we were always together. Mm -hmm. Seriously, I mean, from I, I, what I remember, you know, Lanny, David, and. You know, my brothers and sisters, you know, we were always, you know, we ate there some, because uh, I have many memories of Lanny, you know, we, you know, sitting down eating or we, I remember when Mama Seuss would prepare breakfast for us when we were kids and us, the boys would all go eat first. And then, cause we'd go in there and go, go into work, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And then, then my sisters ate after we did. And so, so, you, so yeah, and y'all would, you would go to school and then come home and it was, and it was, it was just open for dinner in the beginning, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Just right. for dinner. You go to school and then come home and it was like, all right, yeah. game, game time. Right, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it was. I kind of uh, wanted to skip school and just stay in work. But, uh, did you really? My, I, I rather, but so anyway. But. All, all of, all of the siblings, all, all of y'all, you guys work hard. I mean, it's, it's, you're up there literally every, every single day, which I think yeah. is when you look at like the, the chefs on TV and stuff, it's like you, you build up a team and then you just, you're in and out. You don't right. have like, but you, you got like, you're still making the. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, it's, still fun. it's still fun. It's still fun. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, uh, and it's not hard work. It's, it really is. I mean, if you enjoy what you're doing, uh, it just makes everything. So it's just a part of life, you know? So you still have, you still have fun, fun doing it. Still have fun. Oh, doing yeah. It. What's, oh, what's yeah. your, what's your favorite part? Oh my God. Favorite part of what we do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I guess you say the favorite part is always toward the end is that, you know, you see, you know, what you've done and, uh, well, I mean, there's different favorite parts, but if you're, what I'm thinking is what you're saying, favorite part is, uh, I, I just enjoy, you know, he, he works one area, I work a different, you know, but, but we work together and, you know, putting it together and then getting it started, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, but you just do it every day. You just kind of don't think about it. You just kind of just do it. But I guess what, I guess my favorite part is when we get together and we talk and, uh, I love when we walk the grounds and go, okay, or he'll send me pictures, what needs to be done. And I, you know, we'll talk about it and we walk the ground, see what needs to be worked on. I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. I just kind of the it. envisioning the right. space. Oh yeah. So people tell me this all the time and go, well, what are you going to do next? I say, well, you know, Lanny always has something of his sleeve. We're always, you know, thinking of something. So, yeah, you know, so and that, like, that's exciting. What's, what's interesting to me about that is, is, is we were designed to cultivate things. Like when you read, read, read the, Adam and Eve in the garden. It's like, he was like, tend to the garden. You're, you're mm -hmm. make this more be you know, sure. beautiful. It's like kind of mm -hmm. in your, I, I don't do it on the same scale as, <laughs> as Joe T's gardens, but like, yeah. I love, can I play here? What can I, you know, it's and you guys lot. are always changing it. It's, it's always. That's probably the favorite part of, I guess, uh, of, of the day in the morning, early in the mornings and the, and the patio when it's, you know, there's nobody out there, but just the, the birds and the stuff and you're out uh, just, seeing how everybody's doing that morning, you know, just kind of waking all the plants up and stuff. And that's, and, uh, like every I said, morning of, he's out there taking pictures. He loves to do that. Oh, yeah, really? He every, does. Yeah every, yeah. every morning I take pictures of, of the patio every morning. You every, do? Yeah. What and, time, what time do y'all get there? Anytime, early. anytime after five thirty. you know, well, somebody in the morning, you're, you're there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, early, uh, early. but, uh, there's also, all this was part of our, uh, backyard or so to speak. And so every little area has a little meaning to it, you know? So uh, there's uh, there's different little plaques that I put everywhere, like one for my mama Seuss, and 
have a little statue from my brother David, you know, a little angel over there. So, I mean, there are, there are all a lot of little things that, that keep me feeling like, you know, I'm walking, just taking a backyard walk. You know? It's your sanctuary, yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's just, every, and every area has, was a different time in my life where I was, you know, thinking about different things and how to design this. It's real electric out there, as you know. I mean, nothing mm-hmm. was actually made to flow. I mean, but it flows, but it's real electric, you know. What was it? What was it like when you were kids? I mean, was it? Was it? Did y'all own all that land? Was that I've always owned all the land? Oh, you've always owned all the land. And it was pretty much a, few, a little bit more property, but majority of that we've always had. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. we had it all. All the patio from the beginning. Yeah, and it was just. Uh, but there was no patio there. There, there was, was no. Old, it was just uh, chicken uh, pen. Yeah. And yeah. chickens burned chicken. the trash in the back. Oh, and, really? Uh, it was just an old, an old dirt field. Mm-hmm. Really, just an old dirt field all the way. There was no uh, nothing on us. I mean, there was one house that we uh, two houses that. We finally uh, tore down little bitty A-frame houses, and uh, we tore those down. And uh, in fact, me and Jody and uh, one of my cousins tore them, tore it down. We remember you still, demoed it yourself. Yeah, yeah, we, uh-huh. yeah. They were a little bit. They weren't that big. Right, those little bitty houses. Oh one yeah, they were play. small. Yeah, they were small tiny, houses. Yeah, really. A little it was, shotgun well, heck, houses. Well, we called the apartment. That was tiny. <laughs> yeah, that was tiny too. That was tiny, tiny. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, it uh, was. It was. You know, uh, I felt like we had a. Very simple little life. It I mean, was. I mean, know? we had out there had pear I mean, trees out there that we liked. Yeah, but, I mean, we, but when you went to school, like, did you? You know, it, I didn't. You know, to me, if we went to school, we just did school for me. But did you? I just went to school. Friend, I didn't talk about what we did him. behind it. So I didn't talk what what we did at at home or at uh-huh. work or what. To me, it was home. It home, was never work. Work and home were the same. It was the same. So it was yeah. it was home. I never called it work, and uh, I didn't. I didn't. You know, it, it was just. Home, you know, I didn't discuss, you know, who I ran into, if we ran it, if I talked to a celebrity or somebody, you know, a senator or something, you know, it was no big deal. It was did, just another person. Did your friends come and eat? Like, did they come, did they want to come? I used to say, well, when, when I was in grade school, he went there, you went to All Saints too, right? Okay. Which was just down the street from the restaurant. I used to, when I was in the seventh and eighth grade, we used to, I would, you know, some of my friends would sneak out for lunch and run down the street, run to the restaurant, which was about three blocks away, run and go eat lunch, and then run back to school. And then until we finally got caught, got in trouble. <laughs> I made my friends work there. <laughs> you did? Yeah. He did. So they would come, yeah. Yeah. So he all did. my friends kind of worked there, a little small group of friends that I had. Uh, they, all, they all put their time in there when they, they were going to be my friends. So they would, you know, pick up tables or. Because that was me. the way you had to see them because you were always. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, 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 after, and after work, I mean, you know, uh, I'd have to make the rice at, at the end of the night. So, uh, and of course, when I'm saying rice, I was only a little pan, not yeah. like what it is now. now and, I, went, I got to poke my head in the, ki- in yeah. the kitchen and mm-hmm. like the oh. rice fat oh, and yeah, the yeah, beans. So That's why I said <laughs> the little. So. I mean, if we go back to, I mean, like he says, and, and which real quick brought a memory, you know, uh-huh. and he's right. I mean, what we cook back in the 60s, Compared to what we cook today, it's not even close. How? I mean, it's incredible. I, I didn't think about that. I mean, one deal of rice it was, would get us through the day. Yeah, we'd have one pan of beans yeah. also. Yeah. And, that, and that's all we needed. Oh, when we first started making nachos, we did first start making nachos in the, uh, I'm not real sure what, when we did, but it was in a little uh, little toaster oven that yeah. would hold four pieces of toast. That's what we actually started. So that's how small it was when, I mean, not you need two, three, two, two or three nachos. And how many you need? Just in a little toaster oven. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. How many, okay, just the magnitude of today, how, yeah. like, how many pounds of rice or beans are you, are you making? Oh, gosh. Uh, without a question, um, um, go through I about. I keep that on my, on my phone, too. I was going to say, it's over a thousand. Do you order it still? Do you order it? Joe does order it. Yeah, and then I, 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 and then, we go yeah. over a thousand pounds a week. A oh, my thousand. God, yes. oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not just throwing a number. Over How a thousand pounds a week. You have like I mean, an assembly without line a question. I mean, a couple of thousand to be honest. But yeah, but it's, it's a little more than a thousand. thousand. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. because uh, I think the reason I take pictures every morning that just uh, I'm amazed to see how how fast it goes. So, oh really? Yeah. yeah. Does it feel crazy like going like, or maybe it just happening so gradually over time, going from six tables? To how, how how many how many people can fit in the restaurant if it's I mean, comfortably, I mean, from, from day one was, uh, you know, like you said, six tables. So we set up to, you know, anywhere from 13 to 1500, depending on what we have going 1, on. 1500 people and thousand pounds. Right. Of I mean, it's cut back. We're probably 
more yeah, 13 yeah, that's since, probably, since yeah, COVID. We probably, we, probably, we probably sat down probably 1,100 people because we cut down a lot of the tables after after the COVID thing and yeah. uh, kind of and made some space. And I, space. We kind of left it like that. This episode is sponsored by the Fort Worth Business Press. As a Fort Worth entrepreneur and small business owner, the Business Press is my favorite source for news and updates about the entrepreneurial community in and around Fort Worth. I read their email newsletter literally every day. It's always full of insights and stories that really matter. Are you ready to be more connected? Sign up for their free newsletter at fortworthbusinesspress.com. But... If you're like me and the newsletter just isn't enough, you can become an insider. With the code STORYTELLING10, all one word, you'll get a discount on the insider membership. Insiders receive exclusive access to special content, 24 issues of the business press delivered to your door each year, and discounts on event registrations and more. Join me and the Fort Worth Business Press in staying up to date on the people, companies, and issues that matter most to Fort Worth. Are you a small business owner or an entrepreneur? Do you do marketing for a small business? If so, I have something that I want to give you and it's totally for free. We've put together a free resource at sixapstorytelling.com slash download. And it's the secrets, it's the tips, it's the tricks, it's the tools of the trade. It's literally everything we do at Six App Storytelling to help small businesses grow. Go download it today at sixapstorytelling.com slash download. This episode of Stories with Soul is brought to you by TCU Neely Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation. They're ranked as one of the top entrepreneurship programs in the country, and they live by the Neely promise to unleash human potential with leadership at the core and innovation in our spirit. The Institute has recently launched the Horn Frog Investment Network, which leverages the expertise and experience of entrepreneurs, business leaders, and investment professionals. They source, evaluate, and invest in the next generation of innovators. Crazy cool. And as an entrepreneur myself, I know the importance of finding great help. It can truly make or break your business. Luckily, as Fort Worth entrepreneurs, we have access to some of the top up-and-coming minds in the nation. If you're a business looking for talented students and interns, visit the Neely School of Business website to learn more about the Entrepreneurial Intern Scholars Program. They're actively looking for placements for their incredible students. They're doing amazing things, and it's exciting to see the next generation of entrepreneurs grow and flourish right here in our city. Is there any other restaurants like that you know of that can fit 1,100, 1,300 people? I don't know. That's so wild. I don't know. Like, mo- like I guess three, we never thought about it. 300 people is a big restaurant. Mm-hmm. Does, it, does it feel like it happened fast or does it? I don't think it happened. Uh, no, it definitely It, it no. did happen pretty fast after the 70s, but uh, yeah. no, it, it, it happened all very gradually, you know, and, and uh and I, th- and I guess we weren't even aware of what was eating or what was going on as we were doing it. As we added another patio, you know, with more seats, and then another patio. And you just kept adding because people kept coming, yeah. or was there yeah. a grand mm-hmm. vision? Did you have like we're going to be the biggest? <laughs> restaurant? No, that was never no, the vision. That was never being the even in there. That I think that I just uh, it's one of these things where I, I was I was jumping, never knowing where I'm going to land, kind of thing, you know. <laughs> and I think that's that's the reason I got that way because when I first put it up there, it was a little nuts to. There wasn't any patios in, t- in Fort Worth or that, that many Let anywhere. Me tell you, I'm, I'm, I think any in Fort Worth. I'm going to say this about Lanny. Let me tell you what. He has a vision that's incredible. Mm-hmm. And I mean it. Mm-hmm. Our brother Lanny, unbelievable vision. And I admire it so much. And I watch him and I listen like you would not believe. And he has an eye that I, I don't have. That, 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 that he can see that he just pictured when he thought about the patio moving on, this and that. Uh it, it's just, um, it just blows my mind. So uh, do you remember when he was like, we should, we need to we put in these patios. Well, I mean. Uh, and it's a hundred degrees I, outside yeah. in Texas. Like, and we opened it up in August. Well, I tell you what, the only time, I mean, it's kind of like I've, I've learned, for, learned from him, learned from my grandmother, you know, over the years, uh, without a question. Uh, uh, I remember when he uh, uh, grabbed me and says, okay, hey, uh, yeah, when we were going to do the, the the rest of that back patio, he goes, hey, we need, let's go ahead, and, what do you think? Let's go ahead and just finish this off. I go, yeah. He goes, well, you know, so we got together and start doing that. And then when we built the, what we call La Pertita, which was a church across the street, and he, he designed and he goes, okay, you're the contractor on it. And I was like, oh my gosh. So, <laughs> you done re- I mean, I've you never done, done this before. before. I mean, you know, him and I were together on it and we did that ourselves. Oh, so did you all, that wasn't existing? Not 
the 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 the, the, the outside, building was yeah, the when, building was and then it, it was uh, it a church it, it was, was an old church back it in was, the 30s huh it was an old church it was an old church. church it had been abandoned for quite a while and it was used for a few things that uh some of the guys that uh an old uh pga golf firm thing had used it and uh finally they uh finally we got to acquire it and uh the first thing was everybody wanted to just tear it down and add more parking which made sense too mm-hmm. but then i went there one night and sat down in there and uh just kind of looked the place over and just kind of got the feel of it and got, I love the bones inside of that thing. Mm-hmm. So kind of hard to say remember bones inside the, the church. <laughs> remember when we took that ceiling off, how excited yeah. we were and when oh, we yeah. took that old ceiling mm-hmm. and it was like, oh my God, this was underneath. We were pumped. Really? Pumped. So you, so you're contracting it. You're mm-hmm. subbing things out. Yeah. Did you do he some... goes, Joe, help. We, we, we got to find somebody can do these doors. Joe, we got to find somebody to do uh, this and that. And then we did. And, it was it was fun. And most of the material in there is actually old uh, material that was left over from the patio. You know, it's uh, the bars made from a lot of the uh, flagstone <laughs> that was left from the floor oh, yeah. and everything else. And we stained it and it, uh, and everything. Everything that we did wind up just being perfect. Just you know, all the raw material that we used, which were a lot of them were just broken half half columns from some of them and pieces of uh, uh, tiles that were used. And everything just seemed to just fit in as, a, as it was going in there. So it took a a look all its own. And did Fort Worth really, like, once you started, did people start showing up? Is that when it kind of started to explode, when you had these outdoor spaces and church? And Well, I think that's when it turned, it made a turnaround in, in the 70s. With the, the patio added a, a the, whole different ball game. It turned into a whole yeah. different ball game after the yeah. patio. Mm-hmm. And uh, people just uh, embraced it and had their parties out there. And first it was just for parties. Mm-hmm. And then, That's the only uh, way you could sit outside yeah. unless you had a private party. Okay. And then uh, that didn't when last did, When did we change long. it to the public? Didn't, didn't, didn't last that, long. Two, two years, maybe? What's that? Not even that. Maybe that maybe first, that, the first I year. I think it was a couple of years, wasn't yeah. it? Because mm-hmm. yeah. it was just parties for two years. And yeah. then it, so many people wanted to sit outside. When we didn't have a party, then we'd open to the public. And then people were getting, at, you know, not happy. Because well, mm-hmm. we want to sit outside while we have so a private pretty. party. Yeah. And, and that's different. when. Well, and then uh, later on, uh, well, in 1980, when we added the second, that second section, uh, JKN on back. Yeah, it's been a lot of things. I mean, it's had a lot of different uh, look, looks at it. Uh, uh, you know, that uh, one of these days I'll, I'll show you all the photos from all the different looks that it's had. But uh, it's been, it's still been our our backyard still, no matter what. You know, it still, still feels that. It still has that feel into and it. And how many of your kids and grandkids now work at the restaurant? My, oh. Well, I mean. My There's probably son. a total of, I mean, if you count everybody family-wise, probably around 25, maybe, you know, still. But I mean, the, total. Is that total. kind of, is that a cool feeling to have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's nice. It's a, multiple yeah, it is. generations. <clears throat> well, that's what, that's what my grandmother wanted from the very start. I mean, it wasn't about fame. It wasn't about movie stars coming in. It wasn't about anything but just bringing food to the table for the family. And that was the only way that she taught me what it was about. It wasn't about anything else, mm-hmm. you know? And that was, uh, and that's still true to this day, really. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. I, I you know we all know the name Joe Joe T, but you, when you, hearing you talk and the conversations we have, it, it was really she was she, like she took the the legacy and, and ran it. She taught she taught you guys how to. She how was to, incredible. She I, was. I thought my grandma was incredible. Without really? question. First without one question. there, last one to, get, to leave. No, I mean, she, she was. was uh, mm-hmm. You're talking about a workaholic, man. That that she just that's all. That's it. Work. That's it. To provide for her family. That's it. She had, but mm-hmm. She's the one that actually taught me how to how to how to <clears throat> how to lead with just your eyes. You know. You okay. Have, explain have, that. Explain you, that you to know, me. The, the looks. <laughs> the looks <laughs> lead she, with your eyes. The lead with your eyes. I mean, if something if somebody's over here, you know, messing up on, on, on a table or something like that. I mean, if you just look, I mean, eventually they're going to turn around going. I feel something on my back. Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know how she. You know, but that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of uh, uh, power that she had. I mean, she could just uh, lead her whole little staff in the kitchen by just her looks. Cause like I said, she didn't speak that much English and her Spanish was, well, I mean, that was pretty fast, uh-huh. you know? And I mean, but she led with her eyes and I'm, I'm very lucky that I've had a lot of my former employees say, I always know what you're doing, but just the way you're looking, you know, your eyes. And I'm saying, really? well, I got that from my grandmother. Interesting. And I didn't even know I inherited it from her, you know? But uh, it saves a lot of time. <laughs> she, she was a perfectionist, no question she about was. that. She oh, was. Yeah, no question. And is that, you know, I, I think one of the things I love about Joe T is you always know what to expect. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, she was straight, straightforward. 
No, no question. I mean, my grandmother was, you know, hey, do it right the first time, not this step back. How do you, how many employees do you, do you have? Roughly? Now? Yeah. Today? Is it a hundred, over a hundred? Three hundred. Three hundred. I was going to say, I was going to say two fifty three. So, yeah. so managing a team, I, I manage. It's a lot probably, of work. I probably have like 19 employees and I it's, feel like it's, a, it's lot. a lot of work. It's a lot. But, but ensuring that like service is always great. The food's always great. It comes out so fast. People are like, how do you, like you said, lead with your eyes. That's a mm-hmm. great lesson. Yeah. How do you, how do you ensure, like keep everybody rowing in the same direction, and motiv- keeping them motivated and. Well, it's just, it's just staying. And, and well, I think that I've always told everybody, I said, the most important thing, you've got to know every one of your employees. We have 300 employees. You've got to know every one of their names. I mean, you've got to bring that personal touch to every one of them. Like ca- you know, care about them personally. They care about them personally. Like if, if a dinner's not coming out, Rod, you got to know what name to call out and say, Jose, you want to get, get that out there, buddy? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because uh, I think that's the personal touch. And, I, and, I've, and before, uh, just the other day, I had a new employee. And I, for some reason, I'm, I guess because of my grandkids, I said, hey, buddy, you want to? And he goes, my name's not Buddy. I'm going, hmm. And it made me think, you know, uh-huh. people don't like to be called, hey, buddy, hey, what are you doing? Or, you know, they, t- but then after, and then that same time, I said, okay, I'll just kind of go back to mine. Okay, um, Manuel was his name. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, he's been the nicest guy, but it was all, they want that personal touch. And, being, that, and being seen. Uh, and being known. seen and being heard. Yeah, so. <clears throat> every, every employee has their own personality. You know that. And that you, you deal with that yourself, you yeah. know. And we're dealing with a lot of personalities and, you but know, uh, juggling that is, but you know, you just get, you know, and it's part of it. We've done it all our lives. So it's a part of it too. But like I would, I would assume there's also a level of, you know, you, you guys are leaders who don't just tell people to do things. You're also, you're there getting your hands dirty and, and oh, no, I mean, I, you, I, yeah, Lenny and I are afraid to get in there and get in it. I mean, Lanny, is that, is that you'll, part of it? They uh, see you there doing it. Well, you know, you it see, it has to be done. I mean, it has uh, to be done. I mean, to to motivate the team, like on a uh, one of the things that I miss and I hate it was, was washing dishes. I mean, I used to love to get back there with the guys. You miss washing dishes? Yes. I mean, and this is only because of, of my surgery that I had. To, and I can't stand that long in a certain spot. But when it's a Saturday night and all of a sudden it's you know ten o'clock and I mean all these dishes are coming in and you look at those dishwashers and I mean those guys are beat, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's, 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 uh, just, you know, you just put on an apron, get back there with them and just start throwing things. And I was, and you get really wet. And we've done it together. Yeah, we've done it. Yeah, we've both been back there. And mind you, with them also, but he'll be over there. I'll be on this other side over here. It doesn't matter. And the team at times like that, you know, because, uh. The employees, is like, I mean, they, they admire that. Yeah. But we're not doing that for them. I mean, we're, I mean. You're doing, you're. We don't want to be at three o'clock in the morning either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we just tell them, I've always said, you know, there's nothing at that restaurant that our employees have done that we have not done growing up. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. yeah. You've got to learn, you got to love cooking. You got to love cleaning, you know, we, uh, remember in the we, restaurant business. We've mopped the floors with mom and swept. Stuff I've done like hard that. times. We've done it all. Yeah. Oh yeah. When we were, were kids. Were there any hard times too? Like it, it, it seems like it's just such a success now you know where there time where there times where we're like man this is this is we've- 50s and the early 60s uh, were, were a little tough uh it uh and i guess it uh, the reason being i guess was i don't know if it was economy or what it was but we did have a little time where we were kind of struggling a little bit and i think that's where uh, uh like joe was saying you know we just get in there done it, it was never oh my god what's happening we never even mm-hmm. thought about that you know, mm-hmm. it was just, let's just get there and get this thing going today and let's get going. It did, uh, back in those days too, which I remember, great memories. Uh, mm-hmm. It didn't matter if it was snowing, sleeting, whatever. We were open. And I remember, uh, in, or, you know, when we were, you know, playing I guess back, early back teens, we played up backgammon up front or checkers uh-huh. and stuff. Wait for a customer to walk in the door, customer walk in, going back there. And we, I mean, when we were kids growing up, we... Did it, like I said, did it all. We waited tables, bus boy, you know. I mean, we were it pretty much back in yeah, those people days. People knew that we were never closed. I mean, if it was a snowstorm, it was a rainstorm. I mean, if I couldn't, we couldn't get employees to the restaurant. I mean, we were there. The family was there, you know. And if one person walked in, we would just like jump up and shut up and said, 
Wait, come on in. Let's go. Yeah, Let's we, get this we going. We took the order and then brought yeah. you the food and you whatever. Made it and brought it. Make it and brought it and everything else. I mean, so uh, we we, we kind of, uh, people always said that we always know that you're never going to be close. I mean, we always know that someone's going to be here. Uh-huh. So, and that's what uh, we kept that going. So we, we're, we're never close. No, yeah. No so matter it's like what. you have done everything. Mm-hmm. And you also can hold people accountable because you know how it should be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, but, but, but scaling it, you know, from six to the operations that go into that, I'm, are, well, I'm assuming are very complex. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, you know, I mean, you've, but we've done it in a slow, <laughs> not, you know, went yeah. from here to here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, uh, and you all that, kind of have your role and, and see it. Like each, each right. sibling sort of has the things that they. And that's what's great. And I mean, like Lane and I, you know, work, we work great together. I mean, you know, he he has his, you know, he, he works we his area. Lanes, works that's, that's, that's what, that's what really in your lane. Yeah. We stay in our lanes good too, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. And that makes it good because, you know. Uh, Every now and then I cross his lane, he gets, hey, Joe. You're in my lane. You're in my lane. You're in my lane. You're in my lane. Back over that way there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we got we to gotta talk about, uh, it, you know, there, there's a menu There's a menu at lunch. You do mm-hmm. have a menu, but but at night, it's really like, you, you sit down and it's like, right. he, the first question sure. is like, have you ever been here before? No. You're like, well, we got two things. Yeah. We got fajitas and... Wh- where did that come from? Is that just because that's how it always was, or was that a choice? Well, we only, like, like Lenny said earlier, we only had one dinner in the sixties. <laughs> so mean, we were the it. We got two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you we got two. It. Yeah, we doubled it. Doubled the menu. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's just always been a small menu. I mean, you know. Uh, uh, but I think ahead. as long as I think as long as you do what whatever items, if you do one item, you do two items. As long as you do them well, mm-hmm. all needs to be done. You know, I mm-hmm. love the attitude. Yeah. yeah, but that's the opposite of. But like you guys did not follow the trends in any way. You didn't feel like we always felt like people need to follow us. Yeah, I, I would probably that's there's some truth to that. You yeah. know, I mean, well, you know, we don't worry not so much worrying about what everybody else is doing. We got to worry about what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We need to focus on us. Mm-hmm. We want to work all we care. We want to make sure what we got yeah, is the best product we got putting out there. Yeah. And we and, do these two things and we crush it. So why? why do, uh, and also it's, part, it's to honor your, your grandmother's legacy. The other, other piece of it. Right. It's a little, late to change, a little late to change that now after 87 years. So, you're way to change this thing now. No, I don't think uh-huh. it's still working okay. So, oh, let's well, just keep it that way. If it's not broken. Yeah. I, but and you introduced fajitas in like the 70s. Right? 1970, right. uh-huh. 19, yeah, 1970. 1970s, yeah. And so, that was the double, the double expansion mm-hmm. there. That's pretty much. And, of and, course, you, and I had asked you before, you said it's, it's cash because you were like, that's how Mama Seuss did it. I'm not changing she it. it. She, uh, she had it in her apron, and at the end of the night, she rolled it into a, a napkin, put it in a knot, and Put it in her little closet. No uh-huh. one went in their closet, and she had a lock to that too. Nobody walked in there. <laughs> so, and uh, so we after she passed away, we found a lot of money in there. She forgot where she threw it. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> great. we really, really? did because we were in there collecting. I was collecting, and everybody was collecting her aprons and stuff. Her aprons, her aprons. aprons. She always had her aprons nice and pressed in there. You know, so uh, that was really special to find those aprons in there too mm-hmm. with money. <laughs> with money, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think I was talking to. Philip told me a story about he he would work and just, you would get paid when you were you were old, older right like he he said he would work he would work his friends would work and they would get paid in like high school but she said he said Mama Sue's would keep like half of his money oh really <laughs> yeah like kept half of his money and then he when he went to buy his first house she was like here it is I, I had saved it for you oh wow. yeah oh, wow. I thought it was a cool story um so. Crazy sounds happening. There's a there's a roof no, roof not. going on. If you if you can hear it in this, um, so I mentioned earlier, uh, it, it's when someone visits Fort Worth, Joe T's is the place you get brought to, just because it's, it's it's synonymous. Like it's such a huge part of Fort Worth culture and history, and and it's amazing. You want to show. It's like when you see a good movie, you're like, have you, have you seen the new? You know, what, whatever it is, you want, people always want to bring their friends friends here, and so as a result. Any, almost any celebrity that's ever been in the city has eaten at your restaurant. Like you guys have served everyone from Michael Jackson to Bob Dylan to the presidents. Can you, can you like, do you have any that, of those moments that stick out or anybody that you were like kind of starstruck by or? I'm not a very starstruck kind of person, but don't, uh... well, I mean, not nice. Well, you say starstruck. If, if anything, just excited. 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 Yeah. I mean, we, and we've met quite a few over the years, yeah. no question. And uh, I mean, it's wonderful. 
met many, many wonderful people. Martin Sheen was just super nice guy oh, cool. sitting, visiting with him and, and stuff. And, uh, uh, been very fortunate to meet quite a few, but I guess if you say, uh, if anyone stand a out, fun which, memory. Uh, a neat memory is, uh, was, uh, Sid Bass had walked in and, uh, visiting with him and Oscar De La Rente was with him and saying hi to him. And, wow. uh, he had been out before and they go, uh, said, so he goes, Joe, I want you to meet, this is Henry Kissinger. And I went over and, oh my goodness, uh -huh. I was just, uh, so excited. I just thought, my God, this is unbelievable. I am meeting Henry Kissinger. And yeah. I was pretty excited. This is US, U.S. history right there. That's history right there. Uh -huh. That's why I guess I was just so excited uh, meeting him. And it, it was it was pretty amazing. And just talking to him and visiting with him, his voice sounded just like you would hear it on TV. And I was just like, wow. Really? This, is, this was cool. That's fun. Yeah, it was a fun, neat, neat deal. But gosh, we just met so many. But you know, of course, Bob Dylan was really pretty cool. And Andy, that was back in your yeah, days. You remember that like I said, one? I, I wasn't starstruck with it. I, so I was trying to think of which ones really uh, I had a good time meeting. Bob Dylan? Bob Dylan, you were pretty nice excited when you met him. He was a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was a nice guy. But I, uh, Ethan Hawke, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, I think when they were married, they came out there and they were young and they weren't quite, you know, uh, famous as they are now. And they would bring their kids out there and... Uh, they would always, get, when they'd come out, uh, they'd always go see the doves. Oh, really? And so I would always be out there talking to them when they were doves. And they were just super nice people. And uh, I got to be good friends with uh, uh, Lindsey Buckingham from the Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac. Mac. And, uh, and it was just, the, it was the kind of people that uh, when, he, when he comes and does concerts, uh, I'll meet him backstage at the end, you know, or we'll just meet in the parking lot and just catch up and stuff. Uh, it's, uh, uh, there's, there, and of course, there's a lot that, um, uh, Oh, uh, Oliver Stone was a pretty interesting guy yeah, to me when he was in, when he was in town, and uh, I remember um, there's just been there's been well all the former all the all the bushes. I mean, when they would come out before they, you know and do all their business meetings at the restaurant, you know, oh, they would do business meetings in a private in a private room. Yeah, <laughs> and you can see all the work now. <laughs> but and, uh, and didn't like James Taylor asked you to cater his. His birthday his, party. his birthday party was in uh, Martha's Vineyard, and uh, he uh, his his um, drummer at the time was from Fort Worth, so uh, he convinced us to go down there to Martha's Vineyard. So we uh, they picked us up in a, in a in a limo here, had all the food. We went to the uh, God. We started that thing at I don't think I ever went to bed for twenty four really? hours. Yeah, just wow. from the here to the airport. To Boston, to the Falmouth, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, Falmouth, uh, the little town right there. And then from there, took a ferry over to Martha's Vineyard, and wow. uh, it was an all-day deal. Had you, had you all catered before? Like, had you... We've catered uh, uh, before. Oh, yeah. But in another, like... Yeah, well, one, one, these, two, these two guys were uh, came out one time, and uh, it was during that when the Cowboys won the Super Bowl. And the guy, the bet was, whoever won, they get their, their favorite restaurant to go to. They're both from Miami. And so they picked the restaurant. So when the guy won, we flew, he flew us out to Miami at the Boca Raton, and then we did a, a did a party out there for him in Boca. Flew out to Miami. Uh huh. Yeah. I had of course I had a lot of the, the waiters that they, they took the van. Me and Jody would take the y'all flew y'all flew. Oh uh, yeah. And and, and talk talk about your brother your brother David mm -hmm. who. We, David, yeah, David was, uh, well, I guess he was the closest to my age, so we grew up together. He was the second oldest. And uh, second oldest. And he was a very, like I said, very charismatic. I mean, great with people. I mean, just, uh, he's the one that actually started the uh, the hot sauce. And uh, that was that, that was his his idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, he was, uh, he was quite a, um, he was quite a mover and shaker for himself. Because <laughs> he was, he was. kind he's of a, brought in Fleetwood Mac and yeah, brought in he a brought, lot. Yeah, he, he was had, friends he with all, all the, right? He knew all the movie, all the movie stars, all the celebrities. And uh, the other day when, well, now that Mule Alley is so big, you know, right now, he, uh, he actually threw our, the first concert there back in the 60s with uh, Michael, Michael Murphy. And it was called Mule, uh, Mule Alley. Really? And when uh, I said, I wish I'd kept one of the t-shirts that, that oh, we that would have been that. neat. Yeah. And uh, so he was always thinking of something, you know. And he was always in. Uh, he was always on the go. And he he helped launch. Y'all had a Dallas location. For yeah, a he had, uh, yeah, he did Dallas, and uh, <clears throat> he had that until he uh, unfortunately uh, he developed cancer, mm -hmm. and so we had to to close that one down. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, 
he he was he was always a motivator. He was good. Yeah, yeah we had a good time. He's we were real close. We really were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Wayne and Dave were the closest, no question. No. You know, we're, no. But he, mm-hmm. yeah, I always heard heard that he was he was one that was fr- like he was the mover and shaker, bringing all these people he in. He was, and, he was, he was. Yeah, and it, he, he, uh, <laughs> he's when they, we did all those caterings at the convention center because of him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we oh, did yeah, all, we did all, people, the, yeah. we did all oh, the yeah. concerts. And didn't he throw a, like? Didn't he have Fats Domino do a concert? Oh yeah, Fats, Fats Domino, Domino at, the restaurant. Restaurant. At, at the restaurant. Yeah, yeah at the restaurant. Fats, amazing Fats wouldn't, uh, wouldn't get on stage because uh, he wanted his check first. I'm going. At the oh, checks really? in the office. All these people are waiting for you. You're late. Do you want to go? He would, no, I need my check right now. That's like an old school music business. That was. He said, said, you see all these people? We can't get paid. <laughs> no, I want it right now. So we had to run all the way to the office to get, to get a check for him. That, that, that's awesome. Yeah, him. And then he had the amazing Kreskin. I don't know if you Who's ever heard of him. amazing Kreskin? Yeah, I don't know who that is. Cool. He, was, uh, he would come out to the restaurant. And, uh, he would do like... Kind of like magical tricks, but right. his main thing was he would hide something. He would tell somebody to hide something anywhere in the restaurant, uh-huh. and uh, he would find it and tell them where it was. <laughs> it was really his secret power was finding it, things. Finding mm-hmm. things, yeah. And uh, he was on Johnny Carson. He was on everything. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. he was big at his at his time. And uh, yeah, he, and every night he'd, he'd find it. That's funny. Until, until one night he did. He didn't find it. Right? No, he didn't find it. Remember, we had, it was in the register. It was we put, underneath we put, the tray. Uh, we said, you know what? We're going to hide something in the register. So the register tra- drawer was there. So we put it in the bottom of the drawer. Of the drawer uh-huh. and put it in there. And so he walked over to the register and looked it up. Well, he had found it. He didn't know that you'd pick the, have to pick the tray up. <laughs> so I got to give it to him. He knew where it was at. <laughs> it was there. What was a strange amazing. talent. It was a strange talent. He was, talent. He was just, uh, at his time, he was in Vegas. He was, like I said, Johnny Carson. Really? Everywhere, yeah. yeah. That's that that that's funny. Um, okay, I want I want to take us to a little a different place. Uh, I, I I'm a big believer that that a, a a healthy leader makes a a healthy organization. You know, a, a grounded leader like to to lead. You're responsible for all, over 300 people in your. Can you, can you guys talk about just some of the things you personally do just to 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 stay he- healthy mentally or in shape or like kind of what your your routines are you know to, to stay grounded and and you you have a lot of weight and people looking up to you, you. Mean our routines of yeah, when we just, get up in the morning and what we yeah, do just, today just what, what what you guys do personally to put in that much work and to be responsible for that many people it's like i i, I and i'm, I'm asking because i know some of the stuff that that you like you, you do yoga almost every day like but but just part of like for me like if i don't have some alone time and read and work out. It, it's, yeah. it's hard for me to show up my best at work. Well, I mean, um, I mean, of course, I'm sure ours are different in some ways. Same. I mean, I get up early in the morning. Uh, Y'all are both morning people. But right? I like the morning. Yeah. I really, what, t- really what time do. do you wake up? Yeah. Uh, four. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Really? I like to, you know, he doesn't like, uh, I used to, well, no, no, <laughs> hang on. No, wait. He's, he shakes his head. No, I'm sorry. He used to get up real early. He used to always get, no, he did. He got there bef- before anybody. Uh-huh. No question. Now I kind of get up there early now. And so you uh, get up before? What do you What do you do? I get up early. I, I run by the restaurant, get some work done, and then I will run to the gym, get my workout. That's my downtime. Is it? And then uh, run home, shower, clean up, and then uh, have my coffee, and then go back. And you're you're there at nights most. Uh, not. Uh, yeah, I'm there in the evenings. The yes. evenings, yeah. I mean, but uh, but early evenings, and then so you, head four home. in the morning. You get you get there, and is it anybody else there? Are you are you in the when in the mornings? Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Our our people start coming in early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Our setup crews getting there and things like that. And Lanny's right there behind me. Don't he may not get up at four in the morning anymore, but he's still getting there bright and early. Don't think he doesn't. I have a little alarm. I think that I know what time Joe gets there. All of a sudden, he goes up. Boom! Four o'clock says. I can't believe he's oh, getting there at four o'clock when in the morning. When he was about to have his surgery, mm-hmm. I'll never forget this. He started calling me. He goes, What are you doing? I go, You knew I was up, didn't you? <laughs> I knew he was already up. I'm <laughs> he knew I was already at the go. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I'm at the restaurant, you know, looking on the computer. He goes, yeah. ah, just, How's everything going? I go, It's going okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he goes, You getting ready for your surgery? He goes, Yep, about to go in there. I go, uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> and so it was hard. It was hard. You just had a couple surgeries. Yeah, it I was just hard. had a couple, couple. couple in this last year. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's slowed a, me down. Was it hard for you to not go in and be at the restaurant? Really tough. I mean, it's uh, yeah, m- mentally, it's 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 really uh, been a, really a challenge for me, a real challenge for me. Because you love it, yeah. And uh, so, and then, uh, but yeah, but of course, seventy three, almost seventy three next month. 
So I guess it's time to slow it down just a little bit. Yes. Not yeah. much, though, because, There's I mean, n- I'm, I'm still not ready to throw in the towel. Retirement right is not an option at the moment. No, exactly. No, no. And, like, Joe, I do, I mean, I do the same thing, Joe. I mean, I'm, our main thing is I think we both work out at least, you know, 45 minutes or an hour a day, every day. Mm-hmm. I mean, that during mine used to be, like, after the lunch run, go home, work out. And then go back to the restaurant. And, and you do yoga. Yoga is. And I do yoga also. And, uh, I don't and do then, yoga. You don't do yoga? I don't do yoga. And then I love meditation, you know, meditation. Just, uh, and uh, just, you know, 10 minute meditation a day, you know. And I love to do it underwater. Not for 10 minutes. I mean, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you know. Meditation underwater. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I just stay down there as long as I can, you know, and meditate. Kind you of know? clearing your mind. Yeah, clearing my mind and everything else. And uh, it's amazing what little meditation will do, do for you every day. Mm. You know, just to clear your mind, no thoughts, or anything. So that's what I, what I kind of do. And then I, I read a little bit uh, uh, in the evenings, but mostly I read architectural books and gar- oh, really? gardening books, you know. Is, and, is that part of your, your your zen, so to speak, is also the plants? and That, 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 that is. Uh-huh. You do. We both do. No. And I, I, I got it from both of them. When I say both of them, my grandmother and Lanny, mm-hmm. how they got into it. And it's just me, I got into it, and I just enjoyed it. It's just, yeah. It, it, I mean, you go in your backyard, you put your earphones on, you just start pruning and just going, you know. It's kind just, of mind, mindless. It's almost it's, like it's, meditation. It's really wonderful. To me, it is. For, I, I, let me speak for my, I mean, I love it. I can, I can spend all day in the backyard. I love it. But, I, think you just get nature, I mean, nature just comes out to you. I mean, the bees, the, I mean, the birds, I mean, they all, I mean, all kind of, it's almost like you know the little names of the little, you know, little lizards that come by. I mean, you know where they're at in the mornings, you know. And it's, uh, I mean, the other day I was uh, meditating in the pool, swimming, and uh, I don't know if you'll put this on there, but anyway, so this little uh, bee was upside down, I'll tell you that story. And so I kind of like, you know, kind of picked it up, you know, so I didn't want it to be down, so I went over there and just kind of put it on the side. I didn't tell you that, did I? No, and so you I put did it aside, not. And then just as soon as I did, all of a sudden, I hear this, <laughs> Jody, my wife goes, <laughs> she sprayed it, sprayed it, sprayed going, the bee you said. What are you doing? <laughs> just took, went my whole Zen thing off. <laughs> that day was not a good Zen day. <laughs> I'm saving it, and you killed it. I'm like, <laughs> so it almost sounds like y'all, you, you kind of designed the gardens also for for you. It like is. For you. Yeah. It's, it's sort of your escape. I mean, like, your... yeah, yeah. I mean, really, more Lanny. I mean, but Lan- us more. Well, then we did it together. Uh, he used to go to the nurseries all the time when he first started doing. Then, then he started sending me after that. Then, of course, we you know have somebody else now. But I mean, but. I mean, but we did, and it's, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, it really did. You, it's neat, you know, picking all the plants and all that. We go picking, I, and that's what I'm saying. Can't wait till I, I do look forward to it. And you go, okay, Lane, you ready? You ready to walk the ground? Okay, what what do we want to put here? Let's look at this. What do you what are you thinking here? Okay, Joe, you know, and you start to go. Okay, we need something here. I go, okay, all right, we need to do this, and it, we, you know. We're just throwing our minds together, and that's mm-hmm. just really neat. You know, it's creative. Oh uh, yeah, it's fun. I run and go pick out a bunch of stuff, bring it back. And what do you got? I go here, I, and seriously, I go. Hey, Lanny, here it is. You're literally going to the store and yeah. you're buying. Uh-huh. Yeah. He'll, be, he'll be he'll be at the nursery over there, and then I'll be uh, in the grass because that's what we did last year too. Oh yeah, and then I'll I'll be taking a picture going right here. That's right. I need some stuff there. So what do they got? What do you got? I know he does. He'll say, "Go send me a picture," and he'll go. Got it. All right. I know what you uh, need. I run back. Go. I go pick it out. And then I bring it all back. And I go. And I, I he'll be in the office. Go. Hey, you ready? He goes. Man, and goes. I got everything. I think got the guys ready. We need to start planning. Come on, let's go. Then he'll come on down. He'll start putting it all out where we think it needs to go. And yeah. he does majority that majority of that. And then boom, and we I start setting it. You it. heard it here. Fun. The 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 family members of this giant corporation are the ones literally. Picking out the plants and putting it in and doing. Oh, it's fun! It's fun. Oh, I, lo- I love that. Um, can you talk like? Can you talk about a little bit just about customer service and just what that like p- part of your philosophy or strategy or like h- like how you want people to feel? We want to feel at home when they come out to the restaurant, without a question. We want them to feel comfortable. Uh, you, uh, you, we got the, like you say, we have the gardens and this and that. When people come out and they say, "Oh." I love coming here. Uh, I love your patio. It reminds me when I'm in Acapulco or when I've been in Hawaii or, you know, you know, it gives them all that. We, it, it's, it's rewarding of all the hard work that we do that they see that and they enjoy it. Um, uh, on the customer service, we've always said to, we tell our staff is our customers are number one, period. Without them, we wouldn't be here today. And we want them to know that, that, that there is somebody, there's a, 
there's a body, there's a person there that uh, actually cares when they do come in, if they have a good experience or say they don't have a good experience. We went through, I've, I have a lot of customers that said, well, I'm not going to know what's going on unless you tell me. Because I said, well, I was going to tell you, but I didn't want to. And I'm going, and that's the kind of a relationship that we've had with a lot of our customers, you know, is that they feel that if they go there, you know, if they didn't get it right, they're going, hey, Lanny, you know what? Mm, you might want to check here. And I'm going, okay, I'll ride on it. You know, I'll mm-hmm. go run back in the kitchen, bring back something else. Yeah. And they go, perfect, you know. Yeah. And you just can't do that anywhere. You know, you can't say that to, at a lot of places you go to. No. And I want to feel that uh, you can send me back to the kitchen if something's not right. Or right. you're going to make it right. I'm yeah, going to make, make it right. right for them. We always tell our customers, you know, hey, if it's not what you want, I will make it. I, I want to make you happy before you walk out my door. I love that. 100%. And it's like for you guys still, this is this is your house. It's like mm-hmm. you're inviting someone into your home and exactly. into your family. Um, have you, <laughs> do you have any stories of just crazy customers? Because I'm sure people drinking too many margaritas and... <laughs> Yeah, we do, but we just can't yeah. mention the names, all right? <laughs> no, no. Most of them have been celebrities and stuff like that. Let's yeah, say that's that. a, a lot of we've, we've had some experiences. Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's a lot of them. People have a lot of good times out there. All yeah. I can say. Okay. <laughs> a lot of good times. And what's, yeah. what happens to Joe T stays at Joe T. There you go. Exactly. That's pretty fun. Are there any... Are there any... Just kind of going back to leadership, any 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 books or resources or just any anything that were really helpful or instrumental or that you love to, to you know, a favorite book that you love to recommend or love to, to share or, or, or kind of change the way, I don't know, you think about the world or even leadership or anything like that? I always keep the four agreements on top of my desk all the time. The four I mean, agreements? What uh, is that? It's, it's, it's by Michael Roos and... Uh, you know, it talks about making your word impeccable, you know, I was doing your best, you know, mm-hmm. uh, never take anything personally. A lot of these things that I have, I, I leave in my office and when I, I'm having discussions with, uh, with my, uh, the employees or a person that, uh, and I'm up, sometimes I pull out a card and I'm going, you know, and I said, oh, you're doing this again, you know, and, uh, but it's, it's a book that I guess I've, I've uh, my go-to book has been for years. Really? And, uh. I even kept it on my desk. I find out uh, Tom Brady he, he does the same thing. And I'm going, oh, really? finally, somebody else knows this book. And I'm going, no, I'm going to have to buy it. Yeah, it's uh, The Four Agreements. Uh, the Four Agreements. Uh, uh-huh. So that was a, an instrumental book for you. It helps me in my everyday life. It really does. I mean, every uh, with different, uh, especially, it once you read it, it's got a lot of uh, things that uh, really touch you every day. You know? Fantastic. I'll check it out. I, l- I always love hearing kind of what what had, what has impacted people joe do you do you have any that come no I, no i i'll leave i'll leave that up to lanny on that you le- leave that up to lanny um if you could go back you know and, and give your younger self any bit of advice what 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 would it be anything that you've just learned over the years if you could go back you know 20 30 40 years ago and say to your yourself back then what would what, what bit of advice or or truth would you would you say i would always i mean the only advice i would have given myself back then to now is i guess to look deeper into, into the future i guess you know i should have looked long i mean i was the kind of guy that whatever's going on today that's what we're doing and we never thought i'd be doing this in 73 you mm-hmm. know so uh but uh, I guess if I had looked a little farther on and said I was going to be doing the 73, I might have changed my mind. <laughs> Wait a minute, maybe not. <laughs> maybe that's not going to be. But uh, I think just keep uh, st- staying with a passion. That's all, that's all it is to it, you know. And so you and you did that. You mm-hmm. feel like you did you did yeah. that. But you would have looked like deeper into the future. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Well, I guess succession. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and it, of course, in your younger self, you know everything. That's the only bad thing about being mm-hmm. like your younger self. You don't listen to anybody when you're a younger self, you mm-hmm. know, you know, everything. Then. Yeah. Invincible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so, uh, I don't think, um, I don't think I'd have told anything myself, anything besides how to get to bed earlier. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> was a lot of late nights in the old younger days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. Joe, do you, do you have any? Uh, that's a tough one. I've, I've been thinking the whole time you or Lanny was talking. I mean, you know, I just, you know, God, I, I just don't know. Um, that's just a tough one. What about advice 
it, to a to a to a young person wanting to get into the restaurant game or into the hospitality space. Be sure it's what you want to do. In the in, in our business, you you really got to have your heart in it. If your heart and soul's not in it, it's it's not going to work. You're mm-hmm. going to have to really you got to uh, you got to give up a lot. Mm-hmm. In our business, you have to give up a lot. You got to be there, do it. Um, you know, as we've gotten older, we we you know had turned over a little bit more to our you know yeah you know kids and stuff you know uh, but we're still there a lot. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I mean, uh, but at that time when you're growing up into it and doing what you want to do and you're opening, starting, you get this business going to where you want it to be. You got to be there a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you give up, you give up a lot of your family time and we've given up our family time to, Mm -hmm. to give the restaurant Mm -hmm. to, you know, it's time. I think that's, that's a hundred percent true. I think a lot of people kind of have this grand vision of it. You know, I I was a part of starting a a restaurant a few years back, years back and, uh, Almost that it was all sort of our our side projects. It right. wasn't our and, and that's hard. It, it's yeah. like you can't. I I would say I learned that. Like you can't. I've started been a part of a few businesses where it just I I had this idea of like I don't have to be there. And it's like you, to make something great, truly great, you got to pour your heart and soul into it. You and, do. You really and that's do. Part, I think that's part of the success of Joe T's. Is like this. You guys, the Lankart family, like you are there putting in the work and putting in the time and, mm-hmm. and a yes to one thing is an always a no to something else. You know, you have right. to, it, it's always a sacrifice. Can you, can you talk a little about just what it, what it means to you guys personally to be a Lankart, to be in this family, to, to, to honor this, this legacy of, 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 of Mama Sue's and, well, I, 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 and Hope. To be a Lankart. I mean, if anything, if somebody asks, you know, I mean, it's, when you said something earlier, it's a, uh, um, uh, the brand, the name, uh, Joe T. Garcia's, I mean, you know, uh, we have a lot to live up to Mm -hmm. our grandfather, our grandmother, uh, our mother and father, you know, who put all their heart and soul into what they did, Mm -hmm. you know, especially like I said, without a question, our grandparents who worked very, very hard to get it to where they, to to get it going for us to continue to keep it going. Mm -hmm. And, uh, keeping that name is, you know, it's real important. I mean, you know what I mean? Uh, Mm -hmm. to keep that standard, that high standard that it needs yeah. to be. So there's a standard associate, associated with that. I, I would say so. When you say that? I think just never forgetting family. I mean, I, again, the, your last name, whatever it is. I mean, I've always, I've never even thought of that in that terms. In a way. It's always been keeping the family together. You know, it's in, mm-hmm. in the family business. There's a lot of ups and downs. I mean, mm-hmm. there's a lot of struggles. And uh, I think that, uh, I mean, that's, I think I've been given a very gifted life to be in this family, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, we've accomplished a lot and I'm very proud of that. And uh, so I think uh, we're, st- we're still hitting it up mm-hmm. and downs, <laughs> but we're I mean, still hitting every, it. Every family has their ups and downs. Yeah. Who doesn't have has their mean, ups and downs? Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you some really quick questions okay. and sure. then, we'll, then, we'll, then we'll wrap. Okay. What is... At Joe T's, what's, what's your go-to <laughs> sounds? I don't know if the, if, if the listeners can hear that in the mics. I don't... Go ahead. These are pretty close. Uh, what, what is your favorite meal at the restaurant? What do you order when Ench- you go there? Enchilada dinner is still my number one favorite. Very no original. Question. So the same recipe. Enchilada dinner is my favorite. Is your go-to. Same here. Same here. And do you get it with, with, with the taco and with the... Everything. I, Sometimes I put an egg on top of my enchiladas. Ooh, he likes the egg. Can I you do that? Oh, God, but yes. That's really good. Can yeah. I ask he for does. that? Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah, really you can. good. You yeah. can. So, yeah, I, I, love, I love egg on top of my enchiladas. Yeah, yeah. that sounds good. Uh, favorite Favorite drink? At the, at the restaurant? Yeah. Yeah, when you're there. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm a wine drinker, so it's only yeah, you're, be wine. You're, you're a wine I'm guy. I'm a wine guy. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Call me a wine. I don't know. Do, but, do, do, does Joti serve We wine? do have some wine. We do. do. Some I wine? mean, it just, you know, house wines. We don't have any, you know, uh, specialty wine yet. Hopefully one day here because uh, I'm really gotten into the wine. Are you working on that? Is that uh, going to be I'm a thing? I'm always working on it. I'm always, always working, working on, on it. it. Yeah, I, I like need, it. I need some of, some of Joe's secret stash. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's he's good. got it up there. Mm-hmm. He does. Yeah, <laughs> I like wine. And my, I just like my palates always say the same. I just like beer. You're he's a, beer. I'm just a beer oh, guy. A beer guy. Uh-huh. Wait, you kind of? I know you the got, tequila. You like the tequila now? Tequila every now and then. He, he likes a little. Into... Uh, he likes. He'll have a little sip of tequila. He does. He's gotten into the tequila thing. Yeah, I've I've, ta- I've tasted uh, some great tequila. Like, yeah, I didn't know much about tequila. There's so many out there. And now. I was over there, and you had you had a little. 
oh, a stash yeah. of tequila. And I, I got a stash of tequila. <laughs> yeah. I got to try some of it. I, I, I got to admit, I was shocked when I started seeing He's like, have a little bit. I go, well, Lanny, when did you start where, doing where that? Where did that come <laughs> from? Where did that come from? Yeah. And f- favorite, favorite spot in the restaurant? When you, when you come and you know, sit down with your, the kids and the grandkids, where do you like to sit? Well, I mean, Lanny's going to say probably the same thing. Uh, we, are, we are. We are. It's the front dining room when you first walk in the door. That's always been our family table. That's always been where we sat. Uh, not that we haven't, don't sit outside, you know, yeah. sit by the pool there, you know, by the fountain yeah. and all that when we have family, you know. Uh, but if you ask where we sit down and eat, we're just going to sit down and eat. We always sit in the front room. His kids, my kids, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody sits in the fr- um, Our brothers, sisters, everybody sits up in the front. That's where we ate growing up. Yeah. And that, 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 that is, feels the most like home. That probably. is home. Would you? That's yes? it. Oh, no, that's no. it. I would, Hands down. Other place. Hands down. That's, oh. pre- that's pretty neat. Okay. Fi- final question for you guys. Just what, what is, what is next? What is, what is next for, for y'all, for the restaurant, for your, for your family? What's, I mean, what's, the, what's on the horizon? I mean, what's next on the agenda of what's, yeah. what the future to come? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any, like for Joe T's or even, you know. Well, I always say Lenny has something kind of hidden always under his sleeve. So. It's well, of course, a, we got the little tequila room we're, we're just adding. It's in the warehouse. Which you're, is, you're adding be, this, this, there's a giant warehouse behind the building. Right, exactly. Where we have all the, all the product, everything. So when you, you have to go through all that, all that to get into the private room and they will hold about 20 people and it's going to be, uh, uh, starting to take parties pretty soon, real soon. Okay. So that's and, another place you could, you could book yeah. a, a party. And, and then we add also have a specialty big, wine in there too. Don't forget that. okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then of course there, there, there is a, a building on 23rd street. That's, uh, uh, that's that we want to actually eventually do something with it. Maybe add some shops in there, you know, because, uh, oh, wow. uh, and do that more or less for what's happening in the North side over there. There's so much growth, right? There is right so now. much growth. And, uh, so I, we're thinking about some shops in there maybe put it in some kind of, a. um, I've always wanted to do a little art gallery over there, but, oh, have, really? but, but I wanted to do the art to, uh, a community art thing mm-hmm. where uh, it would help uh, and the proceeds will, from a lot of their stuff would go for their scholarships and help them go through school because there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of talent out there with these uh, in, the, in the neighborhood and unfortunately they don't have the resources to do what they want. Mm-hmm. And so um, with, I have a big warehouse and it's probably 14,000 square feet. And so whether we could do uh, workshops and stuff like that, and I thought that'd be a lot of fun. That's a, that's, that's a cool idea. Along with a little taco shop on the side. And <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Never. No, uh-huh. no, no rest for the weary. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gonna keep going. Well, f- well, fellas, I appreciate you joining me on, on this and sharing your story well, and your, your thank family's you for having family us. story. Well, thank you for having us. It's been, it's been wonderful. Thank you. thank you so Fun much. Fun to get a few minutes just inside, you know, y'all's minds and hear how you think about restaurant world. It's, well, well, thank, thank you. For you. Thank you, us. sir. Thank Incredible. you. Congratulations, you made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Stories with Soul. If you enjoyed the interview and like what you heard, please help us out and share, subscribe, and like anywhere you listen to podcasts. When you share and subscribe, it is insanely helpful and allows us to keep producing new episodes. You can always join us directly in the studio by watching the video version on our website, 6thavstorytelling.com. Stories with Soul is brought to you by 6 Ave Storytelling, an organic marketing company building standout brands on the foundation of story. You're obsessed with your business and we want to make the world obsessed with it too. Thanks for listening.